let's define a reference angle. So a reference angle we're going to call it theta with a subscript of r, so theta r, is formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Okay, so it's formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. Now there's one more thing I need to add in here, and that's the fact that theta r is always going to be acute. So it's going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. So let's look at four different possibilities. So let's say we have our angle in quadrant 1, so starting from standard position. Let's say our theta <clears throat> is in quadrant 1. So the reference angle is formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. So from the terminal side, we have two ways to get back to the x-axis. Either go back to the positive side or over to the negative side. But if I go over to the negative side, that's more than 90 degrees. So in this case, this theta is theta r. That's an acute angle. Okay, let's say we're in the second quadrant. Let's find our theta. So again, from the terminal side to the x-axis, two ways to get there, either go forward or go back. If I go back, that's more than 90 degrees, so I have to go forward. And there's theta r. Okay, third quadrant. Define our angle theta. So from the terminal side of theta back to the x-axis, either go back or go forward. Always make sure it's less than 90 degrees, so I'm going to go back. Okay, one more possibility, fourth quadrant. Okay, so from the terminal side of theta back to the x-axis, less than 90 degrees. Okay, so those are the pictures. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to give you an angle. We're going to find the reference angle. So let's say that theta is 120 degrees. I'm going to draw a little picture. 120 degrees is going to be in the second quadrant. Okay, so to get me back to the x-axis, I need to go forward, so that's less than 90 degrees. So a half a revolution is 180, so if that's 120, then theta r is what's left, which is 60 degrees. Okay, let's say that theta is 210 degrees. So again, just drawing my picture, 210 degrees would be in the third quadrant. So to get back to the x-axis from the terminal side, to stay less than 90 degrees, I need to go backwards. Again, half a revolution is 180, so to get to 210, that's 30 degrees. Okay, let's look at this maybe in terms of radians, see how to handle that. So let's do something in the third quadrant. So let's say that theta is 7 pi over 4. Okay, to get back to the x-axis, to stay less than 90 degrees, or in this case now pi over 2, we need to go forward. One full revolution is 2 pi. So if I want to relate this back to 4, 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. So if this is 7 pi over 4, then I just have 1 pi over 4 left. All right, let's look at one more. Let's do radians again. Let's say that theta, oh, there we go, theta. Let's say that theta is 5 pi over 6. Okay, 
half a revolution is pi, so this is a little bit less than that. Okay, so to get back to the x-axis, to stay less than pi over 2, you need to go forward. Okay, a half a revolution is pi. So if I want to relate this back with a common denominator of 6, this would be 6 pi over 6. So if this is 5 pi over 6, then I have 1 pi over 6 left. 